Um, I will tell you how the hearing will proceed, but first I have to read a notification. In accordance with the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting will be broadcast live through local access cable on Facebook Live on public access Facebook page and will be able to be found on the Lunenburg Public Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the meeting. To re participate remotely from a complete computer, please use the link Zoom meeting and computer uh, users may use the raise hand feature to request to speak. I'd like to introduce you uh, to the board. Lisa Normandin, the board secretary, is on Zoom. I'm Alfred Gravel. This is James Bezikoski, Hans Wintrup, David Blatt, Patrick Callahan, Tony Nicastro, and Don Gurney. The way the hearing will proceed is Lisa will read the, the applications and any other submitted communications. The applicant will have the opportunity for comments on the application or submission of additional documents. Please come forward to the mic, give your name and address. Board members will have the opportunity to ask questions that they might have on the application while you are at the mic. There will be a public comment period. You will please come to the mic uh, give your name and address, and please uh, address all comments and questions to the board. Uh, tonight, we have uh, two different cases. Uh, the first uh, one discussion for tonight is an application is seeking a special permit for auto sales and auto repairs. The second uh, applicant <coughs> is appealing as a person agreed by the zoning board official uh, officer. And the third will be a continuation of the discussion on water and sewer for the 40B, known as Palm View Commons. And with that, I would ask Lisa to please read the first uh, applicant. Recording in progress. This is an application for a special permit, Massachusetts <laughs> General Law, Chapter 48, Section 9, Zoning Board of Appeals. The name and address of the applicant is Jacques Massif. 436 Chandler Street, Apartment 5 in Worcester, Mass, 01602. Uh, does business as J&E Realty Enterprises Incorporated. The undersigned hereby makes application as follows. He's seeking a special permit to operate an automotive business and permission to sell 35 register ready automobiles as shown on the plan. The proposed action has begun. The, repair, the repairs have begun, the sales have not begun. The basis for this application for special permit is found in the following section of the Lunenburg Bylaw, section 250-4.1L1 and 250-4.1L2. The street address of the property is 383 Whalen Road in Lunenburg, assesses map 98, parcel 163. The name and address of each legal holder to the land, which is the subject of this case, J&E Realty Enterprises Incorporated, 436 Chandler Street in Worcester, Mass, 01602. And the deed is recorded in Worcester Northern District Registry of Deeds, Book 10485, page 288, and recorded December 16, 2022. If the undersigned has any knowledge of a prior appeal, application, or petition concerning the land of building involved in this case, describe the dates, the case, and the dates involved. In July of 1995, John Hoover was granted a special permit to sell 30 cars for sale. In May of 1997, Stephen Geary was granted a special permit to sell 20 cars at the site. And in June 2001, Raymond Ford was granted 20 cars for sale at the site. The, app, uh, the applicant has answered the special permit questions and answers as follows. The question, will the proposed action be injurious or dangerous to the public health or unduly hazardous because of traffic congestion, danger of fire or explosion or other reasons? The reply, no danger to the public. All work to be performed inside the building. Adequate access for police and fire apparatus. B, will this action have a proposed, have a material adverse effect on the value of land and buildings in the neighborhood or on the amenities of the neighborhood? The reply, have already begun improving property since sale date will have positive effect on the land and buildings in the area. C, will the proposed action be operated with reasonable regard for order and sightliness of an open use? Yes, no off-cast equipment or junk be left outdoors. 
D, will the proposed action reduce noise, vibration, dust, odor, heat, or glare observable at the lot lines and are most clearly detrimental to the normal use of adjacent property? The reply, no, all repairs indoors, indoors, outdoor sales will not have speakers on site. And that's signed on December 27, 2022 by Jacques E. Nessie of 436 Chandler Street in Worcester. A letter was received by the zoning official uh, dated December 27th to Alfred Gravel, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I have reviewed the application and have the following comments. The property in question is parcel ID 98-163, listed as 383 Whalen Road. It is in the commercial district. The building is currently being used as a commercial structure with an automotive business and a hair salon. The proposed use is to continue their current uses with a new owner. The submitted application requests an automotive repair business as well as well as an automotive sales business with 35 vehicles. Under the Town of Lunenburg Zoning Bylaw, these uses are captured under Table of Uses 254-4.1L1 for auto sales and 254.1L2 for auto repair facility. Both uses require special permit for these uses in the commercial district from the Zoning Board of Appeals. In addition, the applicant must apply to the planning board for site plan of approval under section 258.4B5 of the zoning bylaw. There is a copy of the field card, a copy of the site plan, and there is another copy that um, he has detailed a little further, and a copy of the D dated 12-16-2022, um, and a list of abutters, Mr. Chairman, and, and that's all. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Okay. And with that, I would invite the applicant to come up to the mic if you. Okay. Um, just to start it, just to clarify it. Um, name and address. Name it, yeah. Jack, Jack Amy Nassif, 436 Chandler Street, Worcester, Mass, 01602, apartment 5. Thank you. Um, you're asking for 35 cars um, currently. Um, this is on the corner of Wellham Road and Route 13. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, currently, you have, or uh, you will have a repair business. Okay. I believe there's two bays. Okay. Uh, you're going to have inspection. Yes. Correct. And. Also, the there was a rental part of this. Uh, the hair salon on the opposite way of the uh, on the Whelan Road uh, Street. Oh, is that currently rented, or are you? No, no, I'm planning for rent. I'm planning to lease it with some amount. With uh, I have to get good tenant. If not, I can, maybe I'm gonna keep it vacant. But definitely gonna try to lease it as a hair salon. Okay. All right. I I just want to know because. That will affect how many cars you have, but I think that from what I saw, you designated a certain area for that. Yeah, yeah, I left the, the actually the left side on the Whalen Road. You have a plenty of parking. If you go like Whalen Road and uh, Dana Ave, you could park like four or five cars this way, and uh, whatever he gonna leave the salon, you have two parking right behind this office. I show it to you, and you have you could park actually on the facing the uh, Whalen Road too. So you have plenty spots. Okay. Plenty, plenty spot. It's big land, so. Okay. And I'm not putting 35, but I'm asking 35 in case. Oh, you know I mean? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, which will address. I mean, address. maybe I'm going to open five, it up to the car, board. 15 car, maybe. I'm, I'm not trying, I'm, I'm considering on repair shop, but you know, some business sometimes, if you're selling some car, it's help the business to protect the bull and stuff. So you're going to sell your own customer, and especially you're going to get a good, nice car. I've been in business since 2003. I have different license in Dudley, and I own business in Worcester. I have, still I have active license class two for 20 years under Jack Nassim Enterprise Inc. and Dudley Mess. I have all the license in my record here, if you guys want to see it. But I move, I'm, I, I buy this business, I buy this land, and I'm planning to move here to buy a house, you know, and I love Bloomberg, so oh, good. that's all my story. Okay. And I pay big money for the land, you guys know maybe, so. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, with that, I'll open it up to the board for their questions. Yeah. I'm here. Whatever you guys ask me, I've been <coughs> in business for 21 years. I'm an honest guy. I'm trying to be honest. With, you know, I'm moving from, I live in Worcester right now. 
I've been since, in, in business since 1999. Car business, repair business, selling car. I told you I have whatever. You guys, you're gonna see my license. I have them here since 2003. I'm class two license. I go everywhere in the auction, so. And I'm not selling any junk car. Definitely, you're gonna be four or five years maximum. Okay. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Um, when I was, I lived by there. And in the past, there used to be two businesses, Dennis's Garage and the Salon. Yes. Now, are you taking over Dennis's business? No, I'm taking the whole thing. I buy the whole thing. Yes, I'm buying. So you're going to put in a new salon or something else and then have the garage and the Inspect. inspection station. No, no, I end up, I, I know the repair business. I end up buying all the property from Dennis. So basically, I own both both uh, business. The, uh, the salon, I, I buy it, whatever, with fully equipped. So if I'm going to lease it, it's going to be really salon, because I know it's all already licensed. You know what I mean? I end up buying for the chair and stuff. Usually, I'm running the garage. I'm going to lease it for good tenant. If I don't get good tenant, I'm going to leave it vacant. And then you'll have your garage as an inspection and garage and retail as one unit. Yes, uh, you have on this side, actually it's facing, uh, the salon facing uh, Whelan Road, uh, the garage is facing Electric Ave, so okay. going this way. The and when I went by there today, I counted there were only eight cars in, on the side, and or eight in, eight in front and six on the side or something, there were only 14. And you're asking for 35. I, I thought that would be a, a lot. You know, it I'm not you guys, whatever. But I, if you go measure it, if you fit, if you go from the corner from Whalen Road all the way to Electrical Ave, if you go like from the pole, you lift whatever from the pole to the right, whatever space to the salon. If you count from the pole to my entrance on Electrical Ave, easy could fit 14, 15 cars. Easy. And definitely gonna be behind it traffic to if you get like fire department. Actually I leave it open, you know what I mean? And you go on other way on the electric ab, if you put like fifteen car on the, uh, facing uh, the next garage, third garage, if you could do two roll, maybe you put thirty right there. And I have a lot of space behind the inspection bay, a lot of space for my, my employee, you know what I mean? Uh, and actually, I take over Dennis. He never did anything. I've been here one month. I cleaned the place. I did Laura. I'm trying to. And along that line, how far off the road are you planning on putting the cars? Definitely, whatever you guys requested. So I'm gonna be so sidewalk. So actually, you have 10 sidewalk. To 15 feet would not be unreasonable. And actually, you have a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Whatever I park my repair car right now, you could see it. It's far away from the street. I know, I'm, I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm in business, so I know what you guys are looking for, so. Right. And it's nice corners, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be very fair, uh, good businessman. Thank you. you know I, I mean? will tell you, I went down there this after, I went down there last week, and when I thought about it, I said, mm, on the count. I went back down there today, he happened to be there. So we walked the site, and we looked at it. The one thing I noted to him is that you have an entrance from Whalem Road, and I told him from that entrance around the corner, there will be no cars. They cannot, no display of cars there because that would obstruct some of the view from Whalem Road to Route 13. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the section facing Route 13, he could put, I think, comfortably 10 cars. Maybe, maybe one or two more. Then we went around to the back side. What I didn't really, concerned about the inspection people, if you got, you know, somebody inspecting in two cars in queue, and you gotta have room for the car that pulls out to go by, and then you gotta have room for the, the base. Um, so I was a little concerned. I told him that whole area has to be open. And he had showed me along the line where his property goes further than what it looks like, than it's plowed. And he suggested that he could get two rows of cars there, for sale cars. Um, and I think that that section would have holded about 10 cars, 10 to 12 cars. So if he did get two sections, he could have 20, 24 
plus the 10, which is 34. Plus the size. Plus, plus yeah, and in, in the salon part, there's like, I'm gonna say there's five spaces that are completely separate from those. Thank to, you. Just to give you a clearer picture. And actually, can, you know, if you see the inspection bay, right behind the inspection bay, I have a lot of room over there. I'm gonna clean the basement. You know, I just take over one month. Then it's he's been there 25 years, he never did anything with the building. And uh, you know, I'm trying to clean up. He, maybe he stopped by and he saw what, what I'm doing over there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I went down there. I, I, absent of an engineered plan for the parking spots, I, I'm skeptical that he can get 30 vehicles in there. Okay. Well, we That's can discuss it. It's all right. You know, I mean, I definitely think. Because I think I, I noticed on Electric Ave, he maybe had 13 or 14 cars there or just on Electric Ave. I could think maybe a few more. Yeah. That tight is that Whalen where they're coming out on the left or right across from CVS. I mean, maybe 2025, I could be wrong, but I mean, if he had an engineered plan and wanted to pay for it and came back and said we could definitely fit it, I'd be fine with it, but I don't think he could fit 30 cars. Right. The way he has it here, right. it's just a, you know, what if I'm not, I'm not, saying that he's wrong but absent of an engineer plan to say that these are you know the the right distance i don't think he could get 30 cars on that okay well we can discuss it so, um anyone else questions for so me? this is a question more from mr chair um could we could we, you know could we look to stipulate the number of cars that would be on the front and electric cab? I, i'll tell you what we can do which we've done in the past um like I say, there were, there were, I think, 10 cars parked along the back, and there were definitely 10 on the front, so you right. got 20. If he could double that back row, you got 30, which I think he could. Um, but um, if you're uncomfortable with that, that's fine. But in the past, at uh, a couple of places, we did not designate how many cars, we designated areas. Right. Okay. So if you're uncomfortable with that, we could just simply designate areas because we can make them clear. And then that way it's what do you, if you can only again get 10 cards in that area, you can only get 10 cards. So can we designate the number of cars in an area? Um, we, I'm just looking at the front. I'm if you I'm, remember down on, on uh, Summer Street, Yes. One of those dealers, he had the cars parked so close, you couldn't even walk between them. You right. couldn't even open a door on one. And so we ended up designating, this is the area you're going to put them in. And if, you know, you can't, if a customer can't look at a car. Right. Your problem. <laughs> right. How are you going to sell it? But anyway, so we can um, discuss if anyone else has more questions. I I kind of agree with that because I, yeah, that's, I, I have driven by this a million times living here for so long and my kid goes to daycare right behind there. So in, in my head it was smaller, but when I looked at it, looking at this, it's definitely a lot bigger than it looks. Yeah. Um, but I, I do, I kind of like the idea of just the area just to kind of keep that corner clear. Yeah, the corner I, I think it's got to be a condition. When it's got to be cleared. Uh, the setback, again, I agree. Now, the one, get the name of the street, I'll call it Route 13 on the other side, uh, the Mazda, was it Mazda? Yeah, Subaru. Uh, yeah. Subaru. Subaru Mazda. Chase Road. Yeah. Um, they had originally cars, if you remember, parked right up to the road. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was trying to think this afternoon on the setback we gave them. I think it was 20 feet. That's the, that's the town setback. Yeah. Correct. But they were going to put a berm on when they redo it. That's, they were, they were going to put the berm. That, right. They were supposed the to put a berm, and then they were going to be. But it was, if they put the berm, it was going to be a lot less. I think it was like six feet, something like that. I guess the question is that if they if 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 when if we approve it tonight, he has to go to the planning board for site plan approval. He does. That's correct. Will site plan approval require him that he had an engineer plan to figure out how many spots he can fit on there? Um, I don't think they would require that okay. themselves. I mean, we've never required an engineered plan from. An no, I know. That's what I'm just I'm just saying absence of that. It just I you know, but maybe I'm wrong. 
No, it's worth discussing, certainly. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yeah. So, 35 cars, we're going to put you snow when it snows. So you're going to put cars on all your lots. Snow? Yeah, if it snows, because we got to make sure emergency vehicles can get in out of there, you know? So we get a big winter, big piles of snow. I mean... You have a lot of room. I could, yeah. If you go now, have a lot of room, because between me and Ted, you have a lot of room empty. And actually, he, could, he saw, we pull all the snow all the way. You know where the inspection bay, you have the dumpster. Yep. You have basement all the way. You have put it all the way behind. It's a have a lot of room. So you guys, if you, if you look on the property, it's, it's very big. It's basically right there, so. And definitely, today I have like for repair, whatever, 10 or 15 cars, but usually I move on right away. I don't leave car on. Right away I finish them, I give them to the customer. I try to book. So usually I don't have too much car for repair. I do four or five cars a, a day. I finish them, I give it to the customer. So there'll be no cars hanging around for, you know, no, no, he, no, he's, he, 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 no, he left, no, no, sometimes you have a leftover car, definitely, you know what I mean, you're going to be like three, four car, five car, but you have on the corner too, a lot of room, you have the left corner, you have the behind the dumpster, this, yeah. this land is, 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 is showing on my lot, it's a close to half acre, but I believe it's more than half acre, it's, it's a lot of room. Okay, thank you, other questions from the board? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, it may, you know, I'm asking for 35, but definitely I'm not getting this number. But in case, you know what I mean, I have to be covered, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I do my business. So. Okay. Um, where do you get your cars for sale? From, usually from the auction. Auction? Yeah. Um, and you... This car. Which I'll read you a, a list of conditions later. No, I, I never but. sell any junk car. Four or five years, we got them off Mercedes dealer or Range Rover, lease from Odessa, from Lindway Auto Auction, from big auction. Okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, what about loading and unloading? Do you bring them in? Do you just drive them in? Yeah, yes. you, you know, yeah, it's actually you drive them, yeah. We drive them, you know what I mean? I have, I, after I get the license, they're gonna apply for dealer plate, definitely, so. You're gonna have two dealer plates. So one. you won't have any loading and unloading because all of no, that No, 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 I, do, I don't think so, no. Awesome. Or you got like small uh, tow truck, like two carrier, you could go just in, drop and I'll leave. Not big carrier, no way. Okay. Okay, so most of the, any other questions from the board? Okay, so most of the discussion right here at the board, it seems to be this, is the hang up on the number. Um, from what I looked at, I mean, you've got, I don't know how many, spots you would need for your your maintenance, your repairs. Um, inspections, of course, I don't think there's ever very many, more than a, no, two or three. It's in and out. Um, the, the hair salon or the whatever you're gonna rent, I'm not concerned with, that's a separate section of parking. Yes. There's definitely five spots there. Along the front, I'm comfortable there's 10, at least. There were 12 along the side um, so that's 22. I think, and I know there was another area which I don't know, I know you had said was for, for the your cars that were being worked on. You see, on. you have the area on the, you know, under the tree, back on uh, what you call Donna Street. This uh, one is right to... there, you know, on Donna Street, you know yeah. where the tree, you know where the dumpster? Mm -hmm. Right there, from the dumpster to the corner, it could fit five, six cars. Definitely not display, but this one you're gonna be for repair or Mr. whatever. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, I, I I would be look to uh, I would tend to agree with you on the you know say the ten cars on electric cab and and limiting the spot where it could start. Yeah. So there's it's, a certain point on the building, and then start from there. And I would agree that I you know having gone by there and said that there is a possibility of doubling the cars that when when they're on the side there, you know. So there would be maybe ten that would be. Um, out towards the street, you know, the most prominent ones, but the rest of them would be towards this, you know, would, could be towards the side there. I do believe there's a lot of room there. There's uh, plenty of room to double up the cars and still have plenty of room to navigate with the garage and mm -hmm. the inspection base. Um, but that, I agree with the, uh, that electric cab is a concern. You know, right. How many vehicles we have there. Yes, I also look at the salon. You're saying five spaces, but if they have, uh, say, three chairs, that's three people, 
for each, you know, that's three people yeah. just working. Never mind people who are another three that cars that is that's already six yeah. plus anybody waiting. So you could have ten cars just with the salon alone. Well, the way I w the way I would think, you know, like I say, there's, there's I think five spots in one section. You could even put three more next to the door where there is actually signs that say customer parking only. Right. Um, which I wasn't even counting for the salon. So that. Because I was thinking, you know, the employees got to park, they got to park. So I was thinking a number um, in my head, which, which I think I'm comfortable with, which it's totally up to the board. I'm thinking that we said 10, 12, 22, 30. I think 30 is a comfortable number, but when I say 30, I would say that's everything. That's cars for sale, cars for maintenance, cars on inspection, no, because they're just in and out. Employees. But uh, employees, so that would be the combined total. And then again, if it's up to this board if they're comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with 30. I was questioning the 36, as I mentioned before, um, but what I'm looking at two different plans of how these things are designed, and the back of the building on Dana Street, where you said there's more room, and this, it looks like there's only a few feet from that's, the building to Dana that's, Street. That's way off. So it's got to be way off. From that, yeah, it is. You know, so what, what do you mean from Dana Street? You have like actually a fence between me and him. You have a fence. I'm sorry? You have a fence between. Well, the, I didn't know. Yeah, you have a fence. Okay. Have a fan, I don't know if he, he saw that. You have a fence all the way. Then put it all the way in Dana Street. So it's all, taking all my property. And you have a tree over there. So from Dana Street, if you're going to park like repair car or, or my car or my employee car, you could put minimum five, six, seven, eight car over there from yeah, Dana Street. Right yes, 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 yeah. from Dana Street to facing the right. electric lab. So, you know, whatever you guys think, but you know, <clears throat> it's right there, the property. So. But the point that I was going to get to was I want to make sure that you have the proper, um, because it's a garage working with fuels, and also other chemicals that could ignite. Um, you check with the police and fire to make sure that they have proper egress, mm. access, and entry and exit. Definitely have entry in and out, in and out all, all the time. I have free in and out, in and out. And actually a lot of people, mm. especially he cross from, he do like he pass the light from uh, what you call electric lab, to win and all, he, he go through my, my property. I don't say anything. I left it open all the time. A lot of people, you know, how you affect the light, a lot of people do that. So we have lot, always open. Never, doesn't matter if you put car in the front or you have a lot of open space. Okay. Uh, he has to go before the planning board anyway, he, right? He does, yeah. And that would be a condition with them that you have to check with the police and fire. To make sure whatever you guys know you know you guys know better than me so yeah you so, whatever you guys say uh, I agree mr. chair I mean on this series yes yeah, so looking at for 35 would you be open to 30 35 being the total including the repairs well and all that you know I would but I'm not sure the rest of the board's comfortable with I that. understand so I would go with 30 and if you look one of the one of the um, Tenants we had in the before for car sales, we actually allowed 30 at that time. And there was right. Um, so if you go back and, huh? There was one of 40, I think, that was mentioned there. Uh, the, the, 40, I don't recall, but I know Hoover was 30. Right. Yep. So, um, anyway, that's why I'm also comfortable with that number. Okay. Because I, as far as I know, there was never a complaint or any issues on that corner. And right. at that time, they didn't have the stoplight. So I think that adds even more safety to that area. But my concern now would be the, the setback. Um, is there a berm there? I don't recall. I think I, I think saw so. a berm. 
No. I don't. I, don't, I didn't see. Do you know it, if there is. What do you mean by um, a separation from Route 13 and Willem Road? Like to side your parking curb, lot. Curbing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have yeah, sidewalk, yeah. Sidewalk. There is yeah, one, right? Yeah, yeah, you have sidewalk. It's like a... Uh, yeah, like a... Yeah, like yeah. this space. Yeah, there is. You could, you could see it right there. I mean, actually, it moves and then it's bigger. All right, because I was going to... You know, I was going to throw... If, you, if we enforce 20 feet back, now we're going to be... And then you put the car there. I don't know how long a car is, but what? 12 feet, maybe? 10 feet? That's good. 12 feet. The car. Say 12 feet. 12 feet. So now you're for 20. Now you're 32 feet. Now you're right up next to the building. Nobody can drive through that area. So I I would say if he puts up a berm, I would go with a a lesser number. I thought so. I understand it. My understanding is that with the other the previous when we did the 20 feet, that was from the street. Well, this is a long. Route right, 13. but here, but we are here. There is in that instance, there was no sidewalk. So if we're saying twenty feet from the street, by the time I get done with the sidewalk, I'm already at a good ten feet. Yeah, and then it would be only ten feet back from there. Yeah, so the twenty not, was down on Summer Street where he had tons of. Right, you know that was where each year it got it got closer and closer into the middle right. of the road. Yeah, well, so yeah, we're trying to yeah. come up with something reasonable. I understand. So does anybody have any thoughts on that? So, as I said, Mr. I, I, I'm okay with uh, the 35, but limiting the number of cars in the front to say a number, whether that number is 10 or 15, I'm, I'm open for right. anything. But that, to me, is the most concern, is the cars in the front, Okay. just with that. I feel, yeah, I, I, believe, with I believe there's room to double up in the, in the, on the side there. Yeah. And I, don't, I also look at it as is, is that I don't see the the time when he's going to have 35 if he's got 35 cars there i don't think you know it's it's a never going to be happen he'd be, the li he'd be the largest used car dealer in this town probably mm. that huh. you know, private no car. that's true they are all, right. so. all right any other questions from the board any other thoughts on setbacks please um if if there is a sidewalk per se i don't think it's a sidewalk the sidewalk comes down Willem road I and know there that. is there, but I don't think on Route 13. I think it's yes, just yes, a berm. Yes, there's a berm. One. Yeah, that's it's a berm. It's a yes, section. Yes, it does, is yes. it an actual yes, tied yes, sidewalk? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I couldn't see it because of the I'm stone. positive. It's a, but All right. So if whatever that's we find there, that car is far away from the... Then no cars would be allowed to encroach upon right. it, and he'd want to keep at least close to a foot away, oh, yeah. if at all yeah, possible. Yeah. So, right. I, mean, I know exactly what you guys look at. We're going to be far away from the state and far away from the building. Yeah. I'm positive. Yeah, yeah, right. That's why I'm concerned. I, I know, I know. We're going too far I, on a setback no, because they're going to block the off access to and a actually fire. actually, far away from the, actually the building, it's only from my office. It's going to be a little tight over there. And actually, wherever you park, you could go fire department behind it very easy. Okay. All right. I have to imagine, too, being on 13, you're not going to want the plow coming and... That roof's going right, right on top no, of no, the my plow, of all your right. cars. I, plow all my I mean, snow. the street. Actually, the I plow, the, you know, I have my own plow. I'll plow, I'll plow the, the snow from Route 13 to my yard. Yeah, I mean, you know, all that salt <laughs> getting chucked on the I go, I, those be, cars. I go behind and plow all the way. I open the snow to my yard. Yeah. You're going to do that. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts or suggestions from the board? All right. So I'm. I'm I know Dave said 35. I'm, I'm comfortable with 30 to begin with. Whatever you, you can always need, you know come I mean? back. I'm not asking for whatever you guys you if, feel it like, you know, if, be uh, happy, I'm fine. Like I say, you can always come back. I would, and I would make it a condition that yeah, from the entrance on Willem Road, do you know what I'm talking about, around the corner uh, to the first telephone pole? Yeah that there'd be no cars just in that section to make sure that that yeah. corner is yeah, a clear fine. view for any tra other traffic. Um, and as far as setback, I think we'll discuss that, but I'll wait for some, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, if anyone wants to make a motion. We're gonna take public comment. Oh yeah, public comment. Does anybody uh, from the public wish to speak? Seeing none, any on, uh, none. No, sir. none on Zoom. Okay. 
So with that, I'll bring it back to the board. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I'll bring it back to the board. I'll make a motion that we grant the permit or a special permit for 30 cars and with the condition that um, the cars do not exceed the berm at any time and that you check with the police and fire to make sure there's appropriate access and egress before you go to the planning board. Do we also need to add the, don't we also need to grant for the uh, repair business? Is it the repair business part of that as well? Do we need to? Yes, yes, the repair is part allow of Allow the repair business. The okay. 30 yeah. is total repairs, cars for sale. I mean, in the, in the, um, so where is it? The application isn't, don't we also have to allow yeah. for a repair business? Correct. Yeah, seeking what are you a special saying? permit. There's, there's in the uh, application, it's seeking a special permit to operate an automotive business and for the repair and permission facility. to sell 35 uh, registered Thank you. automobiles. Yeah. <clears throat> so I will add that to make sure that that's included. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the setback. If there, if there is a sidewalk in Broome, which I know, I kind of thought in my head that I had seen one, yes, I but I wasn't really looking for it. Um, I, I would suggest that it, those are usually about four feet wide. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would add a couple feet to that. So a setback of at least six feet from Route 13. So amended. Okay. Six. Any other? Comments? Any second to the motion? I would second the motion to allow for the auto repair facility and for auto sales, including 30 vehicles and a six foot setback. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. So I'll ask for a vote. James? Aye. Han? Aye. I'm going to let these guys go. Like that? I'm going to let one of these gentlemen go today. Aye. Uh, Okay, that's fine. Patrick? Hi. One of you gentlemen? No, you're not here. And I say aye. Okay, so it is, it is approved. Thank you. The application. I do have to read you. Lisa wants to read something. Lisa, if you would like to read Do you want to read something? She wants you to. I want you to read the conditions that I gave you. What's that? The conditions. The conditions? Read. Yeah. Oh, you I don't read, um, you read those? Yeah, you have to read the conditions. Yeah, I'm going to read the conditions in a minute. Okay. Um, okay. So, it is approved. I am going to leave. I'm going to add some conditions to the conditions. The condition about the corner, you understand from the the cut where your entrance from Willem Road around the corner to the flagpole, no cars. Okay, so open that up. Um, the other condition is going to be the, if there is burnt or sidewalks, the minimum from the side edge of the road is six feet. Yep. Okay. Now, the other conditions. Ah, these are conditions that we apply to pretty much all automotive sales and repairs places. Uh, cars must be placed six, I'm going to six feet from Route 13. Uh, there's going to be a limit of 30 cars that may be displayed for storage sale or employee parking. These vehicles that are for sale shall be ready and maintained inspections as required by the Registry of Motor Vehicles. All loading and unloading of vehicles to be done off street for safety purposes. No parts, materials, or tools shall be displayed or stored outdoors. No junk, as that the term is here and after defined, shall be stored or maintained out of doors as used herein. The term junk shall mean any workout, cast off, discarded articles or material which are ready for destruction or which have been collected or stored for salvage or conversion to some other use. 
Um, one thing we didn't discuss was business hours. Uh, eight to five. Eight to Monday five. Monday Friday, eight till uh, twelve or one o'clock sometimes Saturday. Let let do it eight till one Saturday. Eight to one on Saturday. Yes, and eight till five Monday till Friday. Do you want eight to five on Saturday? So no. you don't have to come. So no, nobody need to work. Mm -hmm. All right. Nobody need to work. You don't you know have I mean? to. I love to work. You, you don't have to be open those hours. It just just so you don't have to come back to us. If you <laughs> okay. To. The eight eight to five was which day? Monday. Monday through? to Friday. Okay. And you're closed Sunday. Uh, Sunday, yes. We are. Okay. No employee. I'm working yeah. hard myself. You know, <laughs> mean you know how it is. <laughs> yep. Okay, the petitioner shall conduct the business at all times in a manner as not to be offensive to the residential abutters, which I know there are on Dana Street. The granting of the special authorization shall ensure to the benefit of the applicant and shall cease in the event the business is sold or sublet to another party. The permit will be subject to a periodic review by this board while the zoning enforcement officer, if the restrictions noted as part of this granting of this permit are not adhered to, or if operated in any way offensive or detrimental to the neighborhood, this board would ask the enforcement officer to begin the procedure to rescind the permit. The petitioner shall abide by all requirements of the Department of Public Works in the town of Lunenburg in the state of Massachusetts with respect to ingress and egress at the property, the petitioners must comply with the Town of Lunenburg bylaw regarding signage, and any lighting shall not be offensive to the abutters or to, uh, to the roadway. So any lighting that you're going to have, you know, has to, you can't be shining into the neighbors in the back, you can't be shining into the road in the front. They have lighting today that, that uh, modern lighting that kind of shoots down. And I also got to redo the post decision instructions. So those are the those are the conditions that will be part of the approval. Special permit is granted with the contingency that the petitioner complies with all licenses, regulations, statutes, and ordinance of any and all applicable local, state, federal boards, or agencies with jurisdiction over the premises. The special permit is subject to a periodic review by the permit granting authority or the enforcement officer to ensure compliance with any conditions. Non-compliance to such conditions may result in revocation of this permit. A copy of the board decision shall be filed with the town clerk within 14 days. Any party agreed by the board decision may appeal to Superior Court 20 days after the decision is filed with the town clerk. Any certification by the town clerk that 20 days have elapsed since the decision was filed, you should have it recorded in the Registry of Deeds. No permit shall take effect until it has been recorded. The special permit shall lapse within two years unless substantial use has begun. And with that, we wish you very good luck with your new business and welcome to Lunaburg. Thank you, thank you so much, appreciate it guys. And uh, I could leave or you want me to stay because I live in Worcester. Yep. You're, you're all set? I'm yep. free to you're go. all set. I, I believe. Maybe this is my wife, she called me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much. Good luck. Right. Welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Good, good luck. luck. Thank you so much. Oh, you dropped your pen. Yeah. Pat, what's the uh, Michelle Taylor? Hmm? Um, there's some people on the Zoom. Okay. Okay. You can't see everybody on and with that, uh, Lisa, if you would like to read the uh, next application. Certainly. This is an application from a person, person aggrieved, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 48, Section 8, Zoning Board of Appeals. The name and address of the applicant is Mark R. and Christine P. Emma of 10 Richards Way in Lunenburg. The undersigned hereby appeals as follows. Appeal ruling by the building inspector that a storage shed locating on, located on a vacant adjacent lot is not going to be considered for use the property of our main house lot. House lot is 8 Richards Way and the vacant lot is 10 Richards Way and they are owned in the lot. The proposed use has not begun. Um, there is a foundation pad only. The basis for this application is following the following section of the Lunenburg Zoning Bylaw, section 250-4.1. Street address of the property is 10 Richards Way, assessors map 75, parcel 11. 
the name and address of each holder of legal title of land, which is the subject of this case, is Mark R. and Christine P. Emma of 10 Richards Way in Lunenburg. The deed is recorded in West Northern District Registry of Deeds, book 6738, page 320, and it's recorded 6 11 2008. Along with the application signed by both um, Mark and Christine Emma, there are some photographs of the shed, the post shed. There is a picture of their backyard. The picture number three is the sight line from the deck for the White Woods condominium. The picture number four is the sight line from the deck right towards Tilton Street. And pictures five and six are sight lines from Richard's Way. Uh, the uh, letter from the zoning official dated December 6, 2022, uh, subject 10 Richard's Way. I have reviewed the application and have the following comments. The property in question is classified the 75-11 listed as 10 Richards Way. It is in the Residence A Zoning District. The nature of the appeal is in regards to the denial of the building permit number E2253. This building permit application is for a 14 by 24 foot detached accessory building, in this case a shed. The permit application was denied on November 10, 2022. The reason for the denial was that the shed was being proposed to be placed on a vacant parcel of land located at 10 Richards Way. The applicant has their home situated on 8 Richards Way, parcel ID 75-12. Both parcels are currently owned by Mr. and Mrs. Emma. It is my opinion as a zoning enforcement officer that an accessory structure must have a primary structure on the same parcel of land to meet the definition of accessory structure and the intent of the zoning bylaw. Without a primary structure present, the shed would then become, by default, the primary structure. Storage is not an allowed use or a listed use in 254.1 table of uses for residence A. In addition, the future sale of either parcel 7511 or 7512 would create a nonconformity. Mr. Emma was advised that that he could combine the lots through a plan approved by the planning board and place the shed anywhere on the newly created parcel within appropriate setbacks. Place the substructure on the 1.05 acre parcel this house is currently on or appeal my decision to the zoning board. There is a uh, copy of the map showing the parcels in question, a copy of the list of abundance, and I provided a sketch. I don't was not sure if it was in it, everybody's um, packet, but Al has a copy with him. So you can look at where the shed is proposed on the can pass um, that down at the and That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Lisa. You're entirely welcome. And with that, I will invite the applicant to come up to the mic, name and address, and say whatever you would like. Did you get this? Yes. Uh, Mark Emma, 8 Richards Way in Lunenburg. Uh, Christine Emma, 8 Richards Way, Lunenburg, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd like to initially clear up some information that seems to be going around that's not entirely uh, accurate and that being that there's an intent or a plan to create some kind of driveway or path or some access to the shed from the roadway. Uh, that is not the case um, at all. Uh, we are looking to put a simple storage shed uh, we're looking to put the storage shed in our uh, neighboring vacant lot that is essentially our backyard. Uh, and the size of the shed is to store my lawn tractor and the snow plow accessories. Uh, I swap them out and do my driveway with my lawn tractor, uh, my son's four wheeler, and my utility trailer. I've had a ut utility trailer buried in my woods under a tarp for years and i want to get that inside so that's the size of the shed is uh, so somewhere to store those three main items and some more junk that's in my garage so we can fit cars in the garage uh on a regular basis uh with that um additional background information and then i just wanted to share just uh why we've put it over to the side uh, I'm going to take you back 17 years ago when we actually built the house and uh, you know we were two days away from actually sell and like closing on the house and we were waiting for the office or the occupancy permit and basically what happened is we showed up 
on that day, and we had a retention pond in the back of our property, which was for the benefit of the entire community um, that is in the that area. The whole Whitewoods area, there's three retention ponds in there, and one was at the back right corner of the lot we were purchasing and building our house on. And so we knew that, and we accepted it. And two days before we had gotten the occupancy, um, they had we had showed up to check on the house, and it had grown from the size that it was to five times the size that it was. And they had mentioned to us that, you know, this was required for the number of houses and, you know, basically it has to survive. The, it, it's there for the 500 year flood. And so we were faced with, we had, we were two days away from closing on the house. We now had no backyard because it had actually come it, up and taken most of our backyard. So what we had agreed to do, you know, cause you know, we wanted children was to move our backyard over to the side yard. So we had kind of shifted where our backyard was over this way. And so that's why you see that shift on the backyard. So we had, they had cleared, the builder had agreed to clear some of the land. So we'd actually still have a backyard. So when we put the shed and the swing set, what we're really doing is still putting it on our property line or what our backyard is um, from, you know, 17 years ago when we did that. So it's right at the grass line of where our backyard ends um is where we're proposing to put the shed which if you see the little map is kind of in the back center of the other lot and i would also add the the a little bit to the photos you see i i, I took a few photos there and provided them with the application packet uh to to show um for the overwhelming majority of the year nobody will even see this shed um, regardless of its size because of uh, it's surrounded by woods uh, from the street views, a couple of street views, I took pictures with the leaves down, and you can barely see through the through the through the wood, wooded area from the road of where this shed is going to be. The, there's actually one person that can see this shed year round, and that's our neighbor who actually happens to be here this evening. Uh, he's the only individual uh, that'll see this thing from 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 a year round if they're in their backyard. Um, all other photos, you can see. I think it's the third photo i forget how i numbered them i apologize you'll see a fence there's a there's a white rod uh, a black wrought iron fence that's kind of blocking the retention pond and that's what we did tried to do to remove the eyesore and the inconvenience of having that pond back there and still have some kind of functional area uh, where uh, the kids could play the children can play and we we put the fence up actually to protect the children from falling into uh the retention pond because um, it is it is deep, um, so we wanted to protect our children as well as the neighbor children from actually falling into uh, that retention pond. So you'll see that wrought iron fence there. Um, for what it's worth, it never fills with water either. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing. <laughs> so I think, um, I think that's, that's the basis for what we're trying to do, and we're just trying to put a storage shed to get those things out of the elements, somewhere to put them out of the garage, and this axe, this 10 Richards Way axe is, is our backyard, and that's why we want to put it there. Okay, thank you. So um, we actually just got this, but so is this, I, I went down there, looked from the road. I know the wooded area is, looks like a lot of wood, yeah, it's intentionally tried to keep that protected from the right. And I did see the wrought iron fence. I, I was curious at the time why you would put a fence like that. in the middle of our backyard. So now I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Okay, yeah, and, we just didn't want the kids and this shows out. an easement area. That's the that's the pond. That's the pond, and that that does, what is this all in this area? Let me see. Where the fence is, all around the fence, all yeah, behind the fence. The fence, the fence uh, runs all along the easement, uh, blocking our what's left of our yard uh, from the pond. And okay. it's just, I mean, like right. it's, it's deep, and so we didn't want the little kids falling into the pond. But it's, you know, it's, it well, has gates. The area, yeah. The area, it has gates so that there's full access to it. It just prevented little kids from accidentally falling in there. Okay. Um, just one other. Now, of course, the building inspector suggested a few things that you could do. Um, I'm going to assume that second lot is a buildable lot. Yes, it is. So, and you want to maintain that. 
Yeah, that is ideal, yes. Yes. Which, yeah. Okay. It's yeah, the a, other the other issue too is that in order to combine the lots, we'd have to have full appraisal of both lots, which is we were yeah we were told we'd yeah, have they, to get everything we, resurveyed both lots at a substantial cost, which is why we're trying to avoid that. Right. Yeah. You know, just okay. To put our put a shed on. The and shed. and since you mentioned it in your presentation, um, how far back on that second lot would that shed be from, from the lot line? As it exists right now, from the two from the front lot. lot line, or from eight to t between eight and ten, or from from side to side, or from the road. From no, not well. Well, be both both dimensions. Both right. Um, from uh, the distance from where eight and ten meet is uh, these are estimates is probably fifty feet, maybe. Yeah. And then from the road, it's. It's got to be at least 75 or 175 feet, yeah, at least. Um, it's, okay. it's, it's in the back. It, that, it's in that back. Yeah, it's, it's really in the back. back. It's probably yeah. closest to its, back. yeah, it's probably closest to the rear property line, and it's probably within 30 feet of the rear property line. And just one other question. Since this is going to be 50 feet? Yeah, it's about, yeah. Uh, yes. That's probably 40 to 50 feet. Okay. That's not to scale, clearly. I, no, I, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I but yeah, that's about 40 to 50 feet. And how are you going to, you know, you gotta, if you've got these tractors and all of that, mm -hmm. are you, is this area cleared now? Yeah, yes, it's, 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 it's our backyard. It's cleared grass. We're plopping it right in the middle of our lawn. So it's, it's okay. probably. Against, against the wooded area. Okay. It's probably 10 feet off of my son's swing set. Okay. to be honest with you so it's like the whole area is grassed because that we had to turn that into our backyard right so i couldn't quite see that, what it was yeah from the, yeah. From yeah. the road but right now there's just uh, as as was mentioned there's just some trap rock where we were planning to put it so i went ahead and in, in, in anticipation i didn't i didn't see this coming uh so we went ahead and had the foundation trap rock put down and then we were just sat and waited for everything to clear <laughs> through because over 200 square feet requires the permit. We wanted to do what was right, and then when it got stopped, that's when everything right. stopped. Right. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to open it up to the board if they have any questions. <coughs> so, so what you're saying is from here to where the gym set is is about 50 feet. No, the, 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 the gym set is prop. The, the gym set is quite large um, and <laughs> two-thirds of it of the gym set or three-quarters of the gym set is on eight Richards way oh so it's over yeah, yeah. it's it's over it's yeah. over it's, oh, over, it's oh, on eight okay. Richards way so and then just the actual okay. swing beam <laughs> is 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 crossed over into ten Richards way okay yeah. thank you yeah but they, it's, just, it's like ten, the sheds probably kind of 15 feet off of the even swing further set. from that no, it's more than that. Is it more than that? From the swing set itself, yeah, it's probably a good 20, 25 feet. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other question? This is the trap rock right here. That's correct. Okay, I went yeah. by in the snow, so like it was. Yes, yes, it's, it's, yeah, it's, covered, it's covered with a tarp. It's right covered now. with a tarp. Okay. So, I mean, that feels, if that, so that fence is going into the woods. That's basically the property line, correct? Yeah. Yes, it goes right up to the property line. Okay. So that, yeah, it, it looks awfully close. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, nope, that's I, I, there was snow, and I, yeah. I uh, would say agree with the fact that you can't. You can barely see it from the road. I could barely see the. Well, when the leaves are up, you can't see <laughs> anything. <laughs> turn around. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't think the issue is seeing it from the road. I think the issue no. is the building department. Just the building of the, the you know right. official said that. Um, in order to have an accessory structure, you really have to have a primary structure, and you don't have a primary structure on that second lot. Correct. So, you know, you're before us, and, you know, clearly in the bylaws, and we're here to interpret the bylaws. We don't make the bylaws, um, but clearly the bylaw says, um, you know, um, any, any use that's not specifically listed in you know the use is not is not prohibited so you know essentially the building inspector saying 
you know, this shed now is considered, you know, a storage shed. That storage shed is not listed as, as, a, as, as an accessory use in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I don't want to go against the building inspector. I mean, the easiest way to solve the issue is to combine the lots At and then be able to Well, not, not, not quite that much, but a significant cost to us. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've talked to a couple other town officials and who are of the opinion that the building inspector perhaps might be interpreting that rule a little too narrowly. Um, just take that for what it's worth, I guess. Um, and that it probably should be considered an accessory to use to 8 Richards Way. Um, um, I understand why the rule is there. I, 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 it was explained to me some of the... Uh, games and tactics the developers can play with grandfathering in certain zonings and that's I not what that's we're, 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 we're it's owned in it's owned in yeah it's owned in kind it's just to put my lawn tractor yeah my lawnmower in. no I, I I understand and 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 you know I understand that it would cost money to have the two lots combined the question is what happens if you put the shed on that lot and then you go to sell the it's, lot? It's then not a permanent structure. It's not a permanent structure. And it's it, and it's it, like you can pick it up and move Well, it. how about if we offer, I don't really want to do this, but how about we offer this? Should we determine to sell that land separately as a vacant lot, we'll remove the shed first before the transaction. Because it's not a permanent structure. It's not a permanent it's structure. A it's a shed. It's a shed. Um, can I say something? I, what I was going to say so, about my situation? Uh, you can, right. I faced the exact same situation about 25, 30 years ago. Not too long after the zoning and all that was done. And we built a house, bought one acre and three acres around to the side of it. Had our house and I wanted to put it off on the side of the house, on the second lot. And when I went to pursue it, I was told, even by town council, absolutely not. And we moved it over, close to the corner of the house, and put it there. I pay one tax bill, not two, because it's separate lots. It's under separate deeds. One bill, one ownership, no extra legal cost. Understood. And I, I, I think don't that's understand. like an option, but you own the two properties. I own my two properties. There's value in having the buildable lot. No, there's no exactly. question about that. And I'm maintain, I'm, I'm, we're trying to maintain the value of that and lot, even though we have no intention of ever separating them or selling them. I don't either. Right, so, <laughs> but they are two separate lots and it's a buildable lot. Could we have it that that, um, that second lot now becomes a non-buildable lot until, uh, a, a, as long um, as that shed is, is, is on there? I got, I got two things. You know, I read this thing 10 times at least. Right. I went through the book another 10 times, okay? I agree with what the building inspector says about you have to have a primary right. or have an accessory. I agree with the usage table, doesn't it say shed, okay? Um, but what they're saying is, and they do have an unusual situation mm -hmm. on the property with that pond. Uh, the other things, the fence, the way it's fenced off. Um, and I truly believe that we can, as the zoning board, um, make that a, an accessory use of the other lot, of the house the lot is on, which I think is eight. Eight. Eight, 12. Which one is it? Eight on? Richards Way is our primary residence. Ten Richards Way is the neighboring lot where we're okay, trying so to Okay, so I think that we could make 
the neighboring lot, because you own both, they're both in the same name. Yes. Right? That we could make that an accessory use to the, not to that lot, but to the your lot that mm -hmm. you live on, the residential lot. And because you say it can be moved, you have to get a building permit mm -hmm. because it's 336 square feet. That's why we, right. we so want to do it the to right get way. A permit. So if we did that, if we allowed that, and you came, we could actually ask that it be written on the building thing, some sort of that if you sell the land, it has to be. That has to be the. It has to be rectified. It has to be yes. either Absolutely. removed or taken down. So would that, I just out of curiosity, would that be if we sold both lots together to one buyer or if only if we sold If you sold both lots ten. together to one buyer, it wouldn't matter because they That's could put what it in that they, Correct. they want. Okay, so if we separated and sold 10, I would, I would agree. I, we would but agree. if you separated the lots. Yes, we would agree to that. And you could put that, um, and we could condition that onto the. We, we, we would agree to that, right? Yeah, okay. we would agree to that. <laughs> just gotta make sure. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. That was going to be one of my suggestions. Yes. So you're making it so that it's it's an excess. I'm going to say it, the condition would be if when you sell or if you sell or whatever, you have to rectify that by taking either taking that building down or moving it to the to the resident side. So I'm just a little confused as far as um, how this how the decision of the building inspector how how we're solving that. Uh -huh. Because the building inspector said, if you consider it as one lot, Where? we would be considering it as one lot for them to build it. But if they wanted to separate out the two lots, that building <coughs> has to disappear. We're making an accessory use to the primary residence. We're making the lot in the building an accessory. Okay. No, I just, I just, like I said, and I just like I say, we we condition it with that so that. Yep. If that comes push comes to shove, it has to be corrected. So I th I just think that I'm just rereading what the building inspector said. So the building inspector is saying that uh, in his opinion, an accessory structure, which this would be, it's just a shed, but must have a primary structure on the same parcel of land to meet the definition of an accessory it, it, structure. Right, and I agree with that. The last sentence. Condition is I'm, I'm saying I think this board has the right to to, to roll. Yeah, and, and he or not said roll. That. He did say that. In his but give him relief. Uh, he, That's what I'm saying. He was just doing his job. I don't think there was any ill will there. I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I saying he's, he's wrong. Right. I'm not he saying the right. building yeah, inspector is wrong at all. Yeah. What I'm saying is we we can give him relief by doing this. So, so basically, to get back, it, it makes it so that uh, 10 Richards Way is basically a non-conforming lot as long as that structure's on there. Right. Correct. Yeah. So can I ask a question? So if we sold, like, 50 years from now, we sold it to our son, yeah. um, and we sold both lots to our son, mm -hmm. it can just stay there? Yeah. Okay. Both, both lots. However, both lots however if you wanted to even give a lot away to your son, the shed would have to go. Right. Then, so if we, but if just, we sold it, or if we, but if we gave both lots to our son, we're fine. As long as the lots stay together. Okay. Yeah. As yeah. Long, yeah if, okay. That's no problem because then it would be. It's like this one piece. Yeah. Okay. And we'll ask that you know if you want to adopt somebody, we'll gladly take be the one that you're going to give them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions from the board? I would also just say realistically, I mean, if that. If I was going to buy 10, looking at what that shed's going to look like, I'd probably say, don't remove it, spin it towards my place, and I'll keep it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <'Cause>, I mean, <laughs> it's, looks like it's going to be a nice shed, too. So. Uh, yeah, okay. And they're both beautiful lots. You know, and it's right. a nice area. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I think the building inspector was just following the rules, and that he, like, actually said that here's one of your options, and he says or appeal my decision to the ZBA. So, yeah, I, I don't. Okay. Uh, any other questions to the applicants? Any public discussion? Anybody from the public that would like to speak? 
I am the neighbor and I'm all in favor of it, so bring it on. Could you please come up to the mic, give your name and address? <laughs> and it's the one gentleman who can see my shed. So I'm Ken Ludy, I live at 6 Richards Way, and it's a shed. Um, all favor for it, so if it wasn't going to be like that, I'd be like, what the heck are we doing here? It's a shed. So I don't get all of the guidelines in the background, but I'm glad you guys are at the point where you can let them build a shed. Okay. So, there you go. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak, please? Hi. Hello. My name is Pamela Rivers. I live at 1 Maysfield Road in Lunenburg. And I guess I want to start with just a question. According to the letter that was sent, um, it needed to be, the combination of the lots needed to be approved by the planning board. So is that step waived at this point from your no. discussion? No, it is not. So that would still be, with, with this condition, that would still be something? Yeah, like, they still have to go to the planning board for review. I see. Okay. Okay. All right. So I, I just want to go on record. I have no problem with the shed either, but I do absolutely agree with, and I'm sure there's rationale in certain you know, zoning laws that have to be followed. So I do agree with the rationale behind the zoning laws and all and, and what was proposed initially. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak, please? Throw my two cents here. Hi, Greg Cucciara, 9 Maysfield Road. I'm a neighbor. I do drive by their house in that lot daily. I won't see the shed. I think you guys came up with a great idea. I thank you for all your time you put into helping the town out. Jim, you were my teacher 50 years ago. <laughs> Good seeing you. <laughs> and uh, that's it. So I'm all for it. I think you guys do a great job. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Would anybody else like to speak? Seeing none, I'll cut off public discussion, bring it back to the board. If there's no more discussion at the board, I'll ask for a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the approval of the request with a condition that um, if <clears throat> the shed is um, what accessory use can be an accessory use to the other lot number twelve. Um, the shed is three thirty six square feet, so it's required a building permit. Should be That's noted that it is um, an accessory use to the other lot. In the event of the sale, it must be resolved. In other words, uh, if you sell the two units together, nothing happens. You give it the two lots together, nothing happens. If you subdivide, something has to happen with the shed. Move it back to your property at number eight. Or just remove it. Or <laughs> remove it. No. Understood. So I have second. Other conditions? I was going to just add that I'd like to have the condition of that the, uh, um, you know, that this, that uh, 12, whatever the number is. 10. Richards, 10 Richards Way. Thank you, it sir. It's confusing. 10 yeah. Richards no, Way. Um, that that lot, could, you know, that that wouldn't be, as long as the shed's on there, that that's a non conforming lot. So moved. I'll second that, and I just wanted to mention that Lisa um, doesn't believe that it would need to go to planning board, but obviously it would need a permit and would need to be yeah. inspected once. Say that ready. again. Uh, Lisa just mentioned to us that she doesn't believe that it needs to go to planning board. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't. But it obviously does need a permit, which means oh, it, would that's right. get, it, it would have to get inspected when it was done. Okay. Are there other Any people that want to comment? I'm um, No, I am seeing it. None. Right, so okay. I'll, I'll throw but, they, but you do have to comply with all the other zoning. Absolutely. Which is side yard, heights, all those. Absolutely. Okay. I feel more comfortable. Did you second it? I seconded it. Yeah. Well, can we have comment on that? Yes. I, I feel more comfortable 
I have no problem with them putting a shed on 10 Richards Way because they own it in ownership. But I would like to see the shed gone, regardless whether they, if they decide to sell the property as the both of them, I'd like to see the shed gone off 10 Richards Way. Period. Sell it to our child? Even if you sell it to your child, they can come back to the board. I just, it's, we're creating a non-conforming lot by putting a structure on that 10 Richards Way. I have no problem helping well, I them think, out. I think that's resolved by if they sell it, they gotta, they gotta, if they sell it, they're gonna build a structure. Yeah, so I'm just so saying if they, if they sell 10 Richards made. Way, they've got to get rid of the structure. Right, so 10 Richards yes. Way. The, stipulate, the last thing was 10 Richards Way is now a non-conforming lot as long as the structure is on there. I'm comfortable with that. <coughs> <coughs> All right, we have a motion, a second. I did second. Can you reread the motion just, just, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I can. I scribbled it real quick. That's I why he was can't. having trouble. <laughs> I really can't read my own writing. Can be an accessory use to the other lot 12. The shed no, is. 10. There's only, is it's it 8 10? and 10. So <coughs> 8 is the house. 8 and 10. 10 is, is by itself. Correct. Okay. Accessory to 8. Yes. Accessory to 8. Accessory yes. to 8. Um, I'm not, the part about needing a building permit. We don't need to put in there. And if the in the event that the accessory used to the other lot is an event of a sale, it must be resolved. And you're saying it by. So I was saying that that um, removal would would have to be re removal. But um, what I was saying is that as long as that that sheds on there that. Ten Richards Way is a non-conforming lot. Right, that's that's correct. We'll put that in. Lisa will put it in. Can I ask one? What is the definition of a non-conforming lot? You can't build on it. Just yeah. Okay. It's just it's handicapped until the issue is resolved. Okay. Okay. Any other comments before we vote? Get a question. I ask another question. You may. Just come up to the mic again. Greg Kuchara, 9 Maysfield Road. Um, I'm just wondering, what's the mechanism going to be for them to change it back? How is that going to happen? Remove the shed. 20 years from, he just removes it and that's the end of it? Shed. Doesn't have to come back here and do anything? No. All right. He removes the Sounds shed. Sounds pretty good, right? The non-conforming is gone. Is gone. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, so the non-conforming, as long as the shed is on there, it's a non-conforming lot. Take the shed out, do what you want. Very good. Use the use the uh, trailer to move the shed. <laughs> the tractor. It's not that big. <laughs> the trailer's not that big. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call for a vote. Aye. 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 And aye. Okay. With that, um, we approved it. Great. Thank you aye. very much for your time this evening. Okay, and that was a person aggrieved, so I don't have to read all the post. Other than, uh, other than I did two things to read. A copy of the board's decision shall be filed with the town clerk within 14 days. Any party agreed by the board's decision may appeal to Superior Court 20 days after the decision is filed with the uh, town clerk. With that, very good. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Again for your service. Okay. Um. Now we're going to go into a discussion continuation on uh, the uh, 40B. Um, is Attorney Costa, I believe he should be on Zoom. Yes, he's, he's on. on there. Yep. Okay. Go back. Okay, and with that, um, what we were discussing the last time it decided to move. Was on the water and sewer. Um, I'll ask uh, if Mr. Costa would like to speak before we start. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, I will briefly um, just to refresh board members recollection as to the, the topic that we had briefly discussed at the last session of your public hearing. And what we anticipated further discussing tonight. 
Uh, and that is, there are, are two uh, issues that have arisen in the context of the Pond View Commons project. We discussed them early on in the public hearing. We discussed them intermittently throughout the public hearing. And uh, they are the, the proverbial elephant in the room with respect to this project, and that is uh, water and sewer. Uh, the project is located outside of the Lunenburg Water District and yet proposes uh, water service via an expansion of the Lunenburg Water District. Uh, similarly, the project is located outside of the town's sewer service area and yet proposes service by virtue of extension of that sewer service area. Typically, those extensions of the district boundaries and the sewer service area would be left to the voters of the water district and town meeting, respectively. The applicant has requested that this board, uh, in effect, waive those requirements or otherwise issue those approvals on behalf of the water district and the uh, sewer, uh, the, the, the town meeting uh, and sewer commission. We discussed whether the board felt that it had the authority to grant that permission. And I uh, have gone on record even before this uh, matter was before the board, uh, stating that I didn't believe that authority existed. Um, Attorney Borenstein representing the applicant has uh, opined that that authority does exist and that authority is vested in the ZBA. Uh, in the course of these proceedings, um, it has uh, come to pass that Although the board was prepared to proceed with review of other aspects of the project, namely civil engineering and traffic and so forth, uh, although the applicant did fund a traffic peer review, the applicant, uh, although it initially committed to providing funds for an engineering review, uh, later uh, recanted and effectively said that it was not prepared uh, to spend money and to provide funds to the board to engage in that review process before first knowing if it uh, was was going to get a fair shake, so to speak, with respect to water and sewer, whether this board feels it ha even has the authority to grant those expansions of the water district in the sewer service area, because obviously if it does not, the applicant has gone on record saying that, that the, the project either cannot be built or cannot uh, be built in a financially feasible way. Um, that being so, I've engaged in some back and forth discussions with Attorney Borenstein. And so a proposal that uh, I brought forward uh, to you and he brought forward to his client uh, a few weeks ago was this concept that what we would do is we would, by way of stipulation between the board and the applicant, effectively freeze these proceedings. And uh, what we would freeze them for is to allow us, both the board and the applicant, to go to the Housing Appeals Committee, which is the agency to which uh, adverse decisions are appealed, adverse comprehensive permits decisions are appealed. And we would ask the Housing Appeals Committee to uh, opine on this issue, to essentially adjudicate and decide this issue of whether or not the Zoning Board of Appeals has the authority uh, to allow for an expansion of the water district boundaries and an expansion of the sewer service area. Uh, both parties would have the right not only to argue that to the Housing Appeals Committee, but to exhaust their uh, legal remedies. So that would mean further appeals if either party is inclined to further appeal the decision of the Housing Appeals Committee. Only once the issue is finally resolved would the, issue, would, would the matter then return to the ZBA. Of course, it may not need to return to the ZBA if the decision is in favor of the ZBA not having the authority to grant these expansions. Um, but if the, if the courts uh, or the HAC rules that the ZBA does have that authority, the matter would then uh, resume, the, the public hearing process would resume before the ZBA, and the ZBA would then have an opportunity to complete its review uh, with a commitment by the applicant to provide the funding for engineering and any other necessary reviews that the board thinks it needs at that time, which could include reviewing more comprehensive plans for water and sewer. Again, on the premise and only on the premise that that would be the outcome if the HAC and or the courts decide that um, the board has the obligation uh, to, to grant uh, that, that those permissions. So uh, this would be again by way of stipulation. Uh, certainly this is something that I would need to negotiate with Attorney Borenstein. I would need to show the written stipulation to the board. Uh, the board would need to understand it fully. Uh, we would need to uh, solicit from Attorney Borenstein a uh, extension that would be filed with the town clerk to ensure that there would be no constructive 
approval of the comprehensive permit. I'm confident that, that we can attempt to do it this way. I don't know what the HAC will make of it, um, but I'm confident that we can at least attempt to do it this way and attempt to do it this way uh, in such a manner as to protect the town's interests, the board's interests. But a preliminary step in this is for a, the board to decide this issue uh, of water and sewer that it, it believes it doesn't have the authority. If you believe you have the authority, we need not go any further. We can just resume the comprehensive permit review. But if you don't believe you have the authority, you would need to make that determination first, and then you would need to agree to this, uh, this process that I just outlined. Um, so that's what I'm here before you tonight to, to discuss. Um, you were not prepared, or at least certain members were not prepared to have this discussion a few weeks ago, so we have continued uh, the public hearing to tonight so that you could deliberate amongst yourselves on these issues, and then ultimately, if you do decide that you want to proceed in the way that I've described, uh, you would instruct me over the course of the next couple of weeks to draft the stipulation that I just described to you, and I would bring that back to you at a subsequent meeting for you to review and ultimately vote upon. Okay, thank you. Um, question. Um, we're going to discuss it tonight. You don't want a motion and a vote tonight. Is that correct? I don't, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I do need a consensus from the board. I, I, I want more than just a, a discussion where I'm left not knowing uh, what the general sense of the board as a whole may be. It may even be that we have to go so far as to take a straw poll if, if uh, members are not explicit in saying, yes, I support this. But I don't need a formal vote because that formal vote will be taken on the actual stipulation if the stipulation is, is prepared for a future meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I see that. Allow for public discussion. No, I see the applicants here. So, would you like to speak? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. My name is Kevin O'Brien. We agree with what Mr. Costa said. We're in agreement with freezing the time frame and going to the HAC and letting them make that decision before we go any further. Okay. This makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. I am going to open it now to the public. If anybody would like to speak from the public, please come forward to the mic. Give your name and address. Good evening, Mark Burris, Chairman of the Board of Water Commissioners. Um, we had, and I don't know if you have had this letter forwarded you that we got from our council today, uh, was a finding that the ZBA or the HAC does not have the right or the power to override the required vote by the district members to expand a district. Uh, we've taken a vote on this already. Uh, we've also, as a board, we have the right to sell water uh, out to uh, another entity, but we also were advised in another article that we proposed not to negotiate this. So it's a position of the water district that this project's outside the district. We cannot feed outside the district. And the members of the district have voted for us not to engage in any negotiations to sell water to a private company outside the district. So I don't know if you've received this letter um, or have I, that. I think I'm, we received it this afternoon. I, I know we did. Okay. Um, Lisa, do you have that letter there you can read? I sure in do. Entirety. So um, the email was received this afternoon at 4.54. Dear Chairman Gravel, on behalf of Attorney Amy E. Wesel, Council to the Lunenburg Water District. Attached, please find correspondence pertaining to Pondry Commons LLC comprehensive permit application. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Very truly yours, Denise Marshall, legal assistant. The letter reads as follows. Dear Chairman Gravel, please be advised that this office serves as Council to the Lunenburg Water District, the district. The district has reviewed the comprehensive permit application for Pondry Commons LLCs regarding the construction of 200 rental housing units on 18.5 acres of land on Howard Street in the town of Lunenburg, the project. As you know, the land on which this proposed project is located is not within the boundaries of the Lunenburg Water District or Water District. Although the Water District is within the town of Lunenburg, it does not encompass the entire area of the town of Lunenburg. 
The Lunenburg Water District was created by a special act of legislation, Chapter 17 of the Acts of 1939, the Act. In that act, the Water District can expand the district boundaries only by approval of the registered voters that reside, reside within the district. Accordingly, the Lunenburg Water District cannot provide water service, cannot provide water service to the project, as the Water District is not authorized to sell water outside of the bounds of the district. I've been provided a copy of the September 29, 2022 opinion from Attorney Borenstein on behalf of the applicant, as well as applicant's request for a waiver from the expansion of the Water District. In my opinion, Attorney Borenstein's reliance on Board of Appeals of Maine and Versus Housing Appeals Committee and Department of Community Affairs, 370 Mass 64, 68-69, 1976, is misplaced with regard to the facts in this matter. Here, a vote of owners in the district is a prerequisite required to allow the district to expand, to even allow the district to sell water to the applicant. In Maine, the issue was an extension of a sewer connection needing a town meeting vote when the court held the Housing Appeals Committee Act, could order the extension as the developer had already agreed to pay all costs associated with the extension. However, subsequent to Maynard, the court held in Zoning Board of Appeals a Broughton versus Housing Appeals Committee, 451 35 41 2008, that GHAC had no authority to order an easement over property abutting 40B development as the HAC's power is circumscribed by the fact that it lacks authority to overrules, overrule state law. As Chapter 17 of the Acts of 1939 in state law, here, in my opinion, neither the D ZBA nor the HAC have the power to take the first step to override the vote required to expand the district. Thank you for your attention in this matter. Very truly was Amy E. Wessel of uh, KB Law. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Lisa. So the, the the opinion of the district is to concur with our council that uh, we don't feel the ZBA has the right to overrule uh, the district's vote or the the bylaws of the district, and I would I would also welcome uh, town council's recommendation to uh, bring this to the HAC and, and try to resolve this situation. Thank okay, you. thank you. Any questions for? Yeah, any questions from the board? Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else from the audience want to speak? Seeing none, we've got our public. Okay. Um, is there anyone that needs a copy of this? Before we go on, Kevin, did you get one? I have one, thank you. I got it this afternoon. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay, so I'll bring it back to the board. Mr. Um, yeah. Of course, you know we just got that letter this afternoon, as you did. Right. We haven't had a chance to really get into it, but looking at it just reading it myself not an attorney we don't agree with that as you probably would figure that's why again we're asking you to send it to the HAC and as Mark just said let's see if we can just resolve this and okay hopefully move forward thank, thank you. you okay I will bring it to the board I uh, I could start, I, I think, at the last <clears throat> hearing that we had, I had expressed that I was not convinced that the ZBA had the authority to expand the uh, sewer service area or the water. Um, at this point, I don't think that the water commissioners or the sewer commissioners have the right themselves to expand the system without going to town meeting or a district vote is voting to expand the district. So um, I just want to say at this point, I don't think, and I also, there's some contract negotiations, I believe, that we may have to commit. And I know that we, I strongly feel that we don't have the right to do any contractual agreements. So with that, uh, that's my opinion. I will agree with town council and uh, the uh, Water Districts Council that uh, 
as a board, I don't think we have the right to override the, the town uh, meeting or the voters of the district. So, so I will open it up, whatever. So, Mr. Chair, I do have a question, I would, um, and it more pertains to the letter we just, re uh, just that was read into the record from the water district. If I understood the letter, and I I'm, once again, I'm not a lawyer, but they were, it was kind of stating that they did not believe that Hack had the authority to override them. Correct. As well. Yeah. So would that be something separate than our ability, or are we looking at it as it as the zoning board would be able to override the opinion of the water district? Um, I think that's what what they want to settle. There's okay. a legal question hanging over us, and it's been argued back and forth. Town council has given an opinion. Um, the council for Pondview has given a, mm -hmm. a d decision. We've heard a lot of decisions, a lot of discussions uh, mm -hmm. from the water district, from the sewer commission, mm -hmm. from the councilors. Um, and so really what we're asking for right now is, you know, we'll go to a straw vote and vote on where we feel, but um, whether we do or we don't. So it's up to you guys, you know, to come to right now what you're feeling is where we're going with this legal issue. Before I comment on that, can I ask Mr. O'Brien a question? Absolutely. Um, Mr. O'Brien, have you approached the cities of Lemonster or Fitchburg and their sewer commissions? about the expansion of your project that would allow feeding the, the sewage and everything into their systems from the town of Lunenburg? I have not approached them myself. I have talked to the sewer department a couple of different times. We do have, the, the capacity is there for both cities to accept sewer from this project, whether we went to Lemonster or we went to Fitchburg. Both of them have the capacity. But you have not spoken to them I physically about myself. anything, or has anyone in your council or anyone spoken to them about the expansion or how it would necessitately um, be serviced and requiring um, pumping stations and maintenance or anything like that? No, we have not. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? <coughs> Questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was not, um, a few weeks ago, I, I think I was, the ch I was the person who said I wasn't uh, willing to do a straw vote back then, but I am tonight. Um, I concur with, after looking at, um, you know, case law, uh, obviously our advice of our council, um, and even the applicant, I think it's I think it's best that we send this to HAC to see if we can get it resolved or at least get an answer. And so I'm in I'm in uh, favor of uh, giving council uh, the appropriate um, you know necessary permission to negotiate on our behalf to see if we can find a resolution. You know, as we only have until mid March to make a decision. So if there if the applicant is willing to time out while both council and from the applicant and our council can work together to see if they can get a an answer from HAC. I'm all for it. Thank you. As Chair, I'd have to concur because I feel like we've barely uh, scratched this, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to reviewing this Trust project, me. and there's a lot more to go. A lot more to go. If and I do understand the <clears throat> applicant's position that this is the this is a gating issue. Um, so I I do agree that. It, it, in his to, to giving himself the peace of mind uh, uh, before going forward that this gets me this there's a decision made on this okay thank you Anything? I have uh, one question and I think it's um, going to be for uh, attorney Costa um, if regardless of however the vote goes does it end up is the HAC the next step anyway so is that I mean does to me, it almost sounds like that makes the most sense anyway, because that would inevitably be the next step. Is that is that true? <laughs> yes. 
So if, if I could, Mr. Chairman, so, so yes and, and no. So there's a distinction between what I'm recommending and the usual course. So typically with a Chapter 40B comprehensive permit, once there is a final decision by the Zoning Board of Appeals and a comprehensive permit is filed with the town clerk's office, that commences a 20-day appeal period. And if there is an appeal within those 20 days by the applicant, either because the decision was a denial or because the decision was subject to conditions that are deemed uh, unsatisfactory by the, by the applicant, that appeal would go to the Housing Appeals Committee. And so the path that we're presently headed down, uh, given the circumstances where water and sewer uh, have not yet been addressed and where the applicant has uh, refused to provide funding for an engineering peer review, meaning that that peer review hasn't yet occurred, not to mention that if you were to grant uh, water and sewer uh, expansions, extensions, connection permits, you don't have uh, sufficient enough information to adequately vet those, nor have you vetted those yet. What that would likely mean is, well, I don't want to guess what the board's decision might be. If the board were, let's say, to deny this, this comprehensive permit based on lack of authority to issue water and sewer connections because it can't extend those services to the project site, what would you say concerning the actual engineering of the project itself? Would you say that you're denying for lack of information? Probably, because you wouldn't have had an opportunity to peer review. When that decision is filed and gets appealed by the applicant to the HAC, and we then go to the HAC with a final decision, there's a risk to the town that the HAC, if it decides the water and sewer issues against the town, it may not remand the matter, it may not send the matter back to the ZBA to reconsider engineering. It may simply say that it acknowledges that the ZBA didn't have enough information before it to vet the engineering component of the of the project or even the specifics of water and sewer, the HAC may just decide it's going to do that on its own. And so that's a risk and not a risk that I'm, I'm particularly happy about on behalf of the town. So I think it behooves the town and the board uh, to support a process like the one that has been uh, discussed between attorney Bornstein and I. It also, of course, behooves the applicant because the applicant gets a quicker answer on water and sewer before it needs to uh, write sizable checks not only to you but to its own consultants for the engineering review for review of more detailed water and sewer so it, it's a mutually beneficial approach in my opinion um, that, that gives both the board and the applicant an opportunity to get a definitive answer on water and sewer before having to consider other components of the project that could otherwise be moved thank you okay Everybody, any other questions? I have not commented on whether or not, but I think it's very obviously that uh, I don't think that we have the authority um, to tell the, town, the city of Fitchburg and Lemons to what to do. Um, I also think the Water Commission um, has met and voted. They've had council. Um, it's outside of the district. Um, if the water district, you know, the, the water district itself has the authority to vote to expand, but then if they expand into a certain area, they still don't have the appropriate authority to just run so water lines everywhere either that it has to be separate appropriations and it takes a long process and none of that has happened um, no idea of where the money's coming from and we have no idea on what the costs i think the original costs that um, were presented with what's happened since covid 19 have just escalated things and made a lot of these things um, almost completely out of range and make it, making it completely unaffordable as a project based on what might happen. Um, there is another alternative too that after considerable thought, Mr. O'Brien may have, which is the first time I've brought this up, um, an opportunity in the meantime to withdraw 
his proposal um, without prejudice, that he could propose something Next. smaller or otherwise in the future. You no, know, he has that right, so yeah. Okay. Um, I think what they want, you want a straw poll, so we'll just kind of go down the line and uh, express ourselves, or do you want an actual vote as a straw vote? No, Mr. Chair, I don't need a vote. I, I think I already have a sentence, but if you do want to go member by member and just a, you know, yes or no, yes mm -hmm. being that you support the approach we've discussed and that I can proceed to the next step, which would be uh, drafting the sort of stipulation I've discussed, I'll, I'll negotiate that with the applicant's council. Uh, it would need to be agreeable to both parties um, and then present that at a future meeting of the board. That's what a, that's what a, a yes would signify. Okay, thank you. I couldn't quite hear all of that. Is he asking for a straw vote? Uh, He's just asking. He, yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. no. Okay, that's right. And then he, I mean, he, he said he has a sense of where we're going. Right, but, but yes he would no. like an actual. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. Proceed. Yes, right. I would like to see this proceed going forward to a so you, uh, decision from the HAC as okay. to whether or not we have authority. So you don't think we have authority? I do not think we have authority. Yes. I do not think we have authority, and yes, I'm authorizing him to prep. To I'm, I'm just going to say that yes, I'm authorizing. I, yes, I authorize. But do the, do you the, think the we approach. have the authority? That's I, what I, we're going for. Well, I'm I'm saying to you that I I'm not illegal, so I am saying that I'm looking at being able to have this, letting both parties have this process, and letting a third party. You know, somebody somebody who's more knowledgeable be able to make that decision. Right. So, and I I say we do not have the authority, and yes, we should go to the hack at this point. So, so, uh, so thank you, Mr. Chair. The only thing I will add, and, and this doesn't need to be discussed tonight, but in light of what was just said a moment ago about letting someone else or another entity or agency decide. Uh, in order to get this in front of the HAC, the HAC is not going to issue an advisory opinion or an advisory decision. They're going to adjudicate a matter. And to adjudicate a matter, there needs to be a dispute. And for there to be a dispute, the board needs to make a decision. The applicant needs to disagree with that decision, and we need to bring that dispute to the HAC. And so what this stipulation is going to say, and I, I'm going to presume, notwithstanding what one member just said, that we have at least four or five members that will support this, the stipulation is going to need to be accompanied by a vote and need to need to memorialize a vote that the board does not believe it has the authority. Uh, I understand you're not lawyers, you don't need to be. You can rely upon legal counsel, you can rely upon the legal arguments that have been made to you and decide between them. You can rely upon the positions of the sewer commission and the water district as presented to you, whatever you see fit to rely upon, but you will need to make a decision that you don't have the authority and therefore you are not granting the waivers to allow for an expansion of the district and an expansion of the sewer service area and then that's the issue that will be brought to the HAC and they'll decide whether those waivers need to be granted by you okay so you heard them so let's that? go back all right then fine I'll, I'll look at it as we we don't have the authority to make do okay, that's, that's fine, fine with me would there there's something be in there about um, <clears throat> the authority to tell the town or well, cities of Fitchburg and Leominster as to whether or not they have to negotiate new contracts to allow additional flow and their costs in doing this? Uh, so, so I, I, I made I made a note when I heard you say that, and so I, the answer is yes. I mean, certainly it's it's going to be your vote, and so we can we can memorialize that vote however the board thinks it appropriate. We can provide as much or as little detail as you want to provide. Ultimately, the issue is going to be whether you grant the waiver or not. So, if you say no, you're not granting the waiver, uh, and the basis is because you don't believe you have the authority to do so. Certainly that in and of itself, I mean, that's the, that's the ultimate issue, and that in and of itself would be sufficient. You can certainly provide added support, and in my, from my perspective, more information is better than less, and we do have the record of what's occurred in the proceedings so far. 
But yes, you can provide further support that you don't believe you have the authority and there are added complications because in addition to having the authority or not having the authority to expand the district in the SSA, you also, for example, may feel that you don't have the authority to uh, act on behalf of the town to contract or amend contracts with the cities of Fitchburg and Lannister. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, but one of the things I'm seeing here is, is that I don't, I, I understand the position based on the information that the water and sewer have gotten, which is not a complete, they have yet to see a complete plan. They have yet to see complete engineering right. drawings. But right now like we have a legal question. Over. Right. So therefore, we I have to eat I, a, Right. I believe we that. focus on right. that right now. Right. So Just I, I do believe question. that that's the only way that that would be accomplished is if we get past this legal question. So that's the reason I'm looking to say, yes, I'd like to move to the legal, you know, to move this to hack or whoever it is going to be to make this. But you know, so yeah, because you, know, you don't believe we have the right to override. As well as I don't believe we have the enough information to even have this well, discussion are, again but we, I think we, that I think I think that 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 it, the fact that we lack the information is not enough we ran at an impasse right yeah. now we're well, going nowhere we can't I agree. I agree get funding for peer reviewers so we're at an impasse we need to settle the legal or let them but mm. we need to make a decision right now pretty much we just think we have it, the you know authority or we don't I personally think we don't. I, or we could do it this way. We could say we all agree that we don't oh, we have can. the authority. We, we, we uh, reject the waiver to override the, I, I, the, the water district, the sewer commission. I think we just really need to focus on do we think they have the, we have the authority? But we took the vote. Yes it was 5-0, no. right? Well. We had a couple of holdouts. <laughs> I, I, I think I have what I need. I don't. I don't think we have holdouts on the issue. I think you have what you need. No, I, I do. You're going to have an opportunity. I'm not asking for a, a vote on the ultimate issue tonight because you're right. going to want you to review the stipulation so that what you're voting on, what's going to make its way to the HAC, is you know what the board wishes to to, to say, how it wishes to rule on this issue. So. I will prepare something between now and, and hopefully your next meeting okay. uh, and work with Attorney Board's team to, to, to finalize it and then get it before you. And it, it may need to be further modified to to uh, capture what it is that you want to say in your vote. But um, again, I, I think in many respects it is a, a simple issue of do you have the authority to grant the waivers or, that are being requested? I, I agree with the other comments that have been made about the authority to, to contract or to vary contracts with adjacent cities. I agree with the comment made a moment ago about uh, the insufficiency of the information, the detail that's been provided to allow your board, or for that matter, the sewer commission or the water district or, 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 or district commissioners uh, to be able to adequately vet uh, the, the specifics of, of what's being proposed for water and sewer. But those are sort of the secondary issues. The threshold issue is, do you have the authority to do it? We're not gonna get into the specifics of design and location and number of pump stations and things of that sort um, if you don't have the authority in the first place to um, to act on behalf of the district voters and town meeting goers to, to grant this approval. Right, okay. Um, so we will continue to the next sharing a date certain and I will, um, as I mentioned before, we'll, we'll just go to our next scheduled meeting. Lisa, can you tell me that, please? Is she listening? I think you're muted, Lisa. It's all right. I'll look on the calendar. Can I mute February 8th. February 8th is the second February. Yes, second and fourth. So the 8th or the 22nd, but the 8th is free. We have no business before the board. Okay, so f let's continue it. Is that all right with Kevin? Um, Mr. O'Brien? Well, I was going to say February that. 8th. Do we, does Mr. Does the attorney Costa believe that he can have the information for us to review? Huh? Okay. Does the attorney, does the, does the town council believe that he can have the information for uh, us? He, he just the said he could. Okay. All right, as long as it's by the end. So February 8th at 7 o'clock. 
that all right with Mr. O'Brien? But it's, not, not up to, it's not his side. It's us, our side to review what Ms. Attorney Castle is going to have. Is that good? Everybody good? Are yeah, you guys all available February 8th, 7 o'clock? Yes. 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 Yeah. There we go. So, okay. We will meet again February 8th at 7 o'clock. And for tonight, I think that's it. Do we open Thank up, you. Do we open up public comment again? No. I don't think no. so. Uh, we had public comment. We did. You just need a motion to continue and a second to vote, Mr. Chairman. I make what? a motion to continue this this till February 8th. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you then. Yeah. Bye-bye. Any other things? <laughs> and may make, make a motion Ooh. to adjourn. You guys wear me out. Second. <laughs> I'll second. All right. Yeah. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. Thank Aye. you. Good night, Gracie. Bye, Lisa. Right. Good night, Gracie. Good night.